Going shirtless again. Shirtless videos, here's to you. I'm a guy with no shirt. How you doing? I think everybody should make a vlog shirtless from here up. Just don't wear the shirt while you're talking. It's freeing. It's too bad boobs are taboo in our society because having to wear a shirt, for women having to wear a shirt in public, that sucks. I like the, I like the option of not having to wear a shirt. And I'm, I, I faced it a couple times. I, I mean, more frequently I've been doing yoga out or just stretching and moving out in the courtyard, meditating out in the courtyard. No shirt on with the sun coming down on me. It's, it feels so good. And one time I went to Jack in the Box. Oh, no, I went to deliver a letter past Jack in the Box with uh, no shirt on. And I was like, I was really nervous. I thought everybody would be looking at me. But I guess, you know, it's all in my mind. I, I, just, I just went with it. I was really, I forgot that I was shirtless a few points, but for the most part I was like, I am shirtless, walking shirtless right now. I am a shirtless guy. <laughs> and everybody else has a shirt on. So, which brings me to, I guess, how I've been fucking thinking so much. <sighs> Sorry, that got really loud just then. I apologize. Um... <coughs> I just had an impulse that you might think that I'm drugged out, although I did smoke marijuana. I actually vaporized it uh, and inhaled it. I inhaled t straight THC without smoke. Uh, it, it heats it up. It's a, it's a thing called a vaporizer, and it's used to heat it up. So it extracts the, it extracts the THC by... I don't know, he, I guess I could, uh, I didn't, I didn't plan on explaining what the vapor, what the vaporizer is, I was kind of afraid, you know, talking about weed in general, even though I got, I'm on my way to getting a full-on marijuana card in California. I got to, I have like a time limit, and then I have to have a diagnosis from a doctor, um, and then that will allow me to get a full-on state card. And I, you know, I know I'm crazy. I, I don't really like diagnosing, you know, in general, because it's like, then you, what do you say? You are depressed. Like, if someone tells you you're bipolar, you're going to be like, I'm bipolar, and when you read about bipolar, you say, I have the, this and this and this. This one's not so much me, but I have this one and this one. I am definitely bipolar. And that doesn't really mean anything, because it, the label doesn't mean anything. It's just a way of describing a way that someone is, but everybody's, like, nuts. Some people are more comfortable with it. Some people are less comfortable with it. Some pe people are just fucking nuts. And all these labels, psycho psychotic, bipolar, manic depressive, depressed. Fuck, what else? I mean, all, all these mental disorders, really. Physical trauma to the brain, maybe, cannot be overcome. But I, I still think that it can be. Because our body, if you break it, it heals itself. And I think that functions all the way into the mind. I think that... Alzheimer's and all these things are degenerative because out of fear, and it's it's like you you're afraid of communicating. So then Alzheimer's re totally removes your ability to communicate. But when once you have it, I believe that you can control it and make it pass, have it recede. People that have crippled legs and that they don't work can walk. It can happen. It has happened in the past. People overcome. People have, a, a man, I believe, fell, I've heard this somewhere, fell 10,000 feet out of a plane, something ridiculous, and hit the ground and survived. You know, it happens. We can do it. We, people probably, why someone dies is because they're falling. They're like, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking die! Oh my god, I'm gonna die! And they're screaming it as they're falling. They're like, I'm gonna die. So then they die. 
But if someone's falling and they just believe, I'm, you know, it's pretty extreme, and I wouldn't suggest anyone do it or ever try it. It's, it's, a, it's a ridiculous thing to do. To, ju- to test yourself, to see if your body can live. But, like, if you get sick, then heal yourself, because you can. All by letting go of your fear and, and confronting your past. Your fear of your past. That's it. That's what's keeping us where we are. So when we get that stuff out, like I put so much of it on video, I've been documenting it for like a year. I put so much of it on the internet that it's just floating on the internet that I've released it. And now I feel like a different person. Like so much, so balanced. Hey man. Hey guys. Alright, I'll wrap this up now. David and Ryan just got back. I, there wasn't any coherent point to this. It was very, it was like circular, 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 like a, like a, like a spiral, like a DNA strand. Someone yesterday said that spirals exist everywhere. David, that was you, right? That was you. Talking about from your shoulder to your elbow. Oh, hang on. Spirals. What do you think about spirals? More interesting than circles. So maybe that's what these conversations on video are, just spiraling. So like a human life is like a spiral. It just leads up to its loudest point, which is death.